Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India everyone welcome back to online NPTEL course on structure, form and architecture the synergy. Uh, today we are at lecture number 19 and this lecture will cover of uh, different components, different arrangement of load bearing structures. So far whatever we have seen in previous uh, lectures with the compressive structure and as well as tensile structure we have seen that how different uh, arrangement, different materials. Uh, they are acting uh, towards like to resist against the compression and tension. So, today uh, basically this is another arrangement that we initially talked about the wall slab structure uh, in the structural typology. So, here we will discuss it in more detail about the load bearing structure. So, at the introduction uh, load bearing structure is the structure where uh, the load of the slab or the roof will be uh, you know carried out or that load will you know transmit through the wall. So, wall will be the main component load bearing uh, elements of the structural system. So, this is one the lateral load uh, again will be taken by the wall. So, two kind of loads preliminary one is the gravity load that will come from the slab uh, or the upper floors that will transmit through the wall to the foundation. The other one uh, is basically uh, your lateral load, the wind load and other uh, different uh, you know uh, the rain road. So, then this kind of lateral load is also be taken uh, care uh, by uh, uh, the wall. So, wall will be the main component in this case. So, here it says the load bearing structure is the structure in which the loads of the roof as well as the lateral loads borne by the walls. So, it is basically leading to the wall slab kind of arrangement, structural arrangement. So, what exactly happens how the load is transferred? So, impose load on the upper story, uh, though the slab or the walls transfer through the wall to the lower floor and eventually that will to the footing or foundation and to the soil. Load bearing structure consists of heavy machinery walls as because the whole load will be um, taken care by the walls. So, the thickness of the wall should be uh, substantial and the as uh, like the material that can um, uh, be used to you know make this kind of wall is either brick or stone sometimes the block. So, in the history like till we uh, like got uh, the reinforcement or the steel in the picture of the construction industry. We uh, have seen that the buildings mostly dependent on this uh, load bearing machinery walls. So, whether it is in the Greek period or the Roman period even sometimes uh, in the modern age where like there are some constant. But we have to understand that uh, the application of this load bearing structure will uh, have some limitation because uh, as because we are increasing the thickness of the wall. So, maybe uh, for that we have to compromise with the interior space. At the same time uh, as because it is only of the machinery uh, work. So, it will not be really you know acting in a proper manner during uh, the earthquake activity where like there will be some you know vibration. So, very irregular tension compression though machinery work they are good in compression, but they will not really act very well uh, in case of tension. So, that is why sometimes you know uh, it is good for a low story building say up to 4 story or so, uh, but beyond that uh, there are some limitations. So, with that uh, we proceed. So, basically how they transfer the load. So, it is basically the wall they act as uh, your structural element 
the you know supporting structure and slab here is basically the supported one. So, the all the load like uh, which is uh, there on the slab. So, all these horizontal load will then transfer to the wall. So, adjoining wall. So, adequately the thickness of the wall should be uh, little bit thick than the normal uh, frame structure uh, wall partition wall because this is taking the load. So, load transfer is life and date load that we calculate uh, for the slab or the upper floor. So, date load is the self weight of the uh, building materials as well as when we consider the life load is basically the load of your furnitures and uh, you know other uh, elements moving elements. Then the uh, load will on the slab will then transfer to the wall and wall will transfer to the lower floor and then the footing. So, this is uh, the way they uh, uh, you know transfer the load and here we are talking about the transmission of the gravity load. So, the load acting towards gravity, but along with that there are the wind pressure and other thing. So, those lateral load will also be taken care by the wall as a main structural supporting members. So, this is uh, the features where wall is acting both for taking the lateral load as well as the axial or the gravitational, gravitational load. Now, uh, definitely the application. Uh, there are many uh, you know uh, considerations by which we will pick up one particular structural arrangement that initially when we uh, discussed uh, the purpose of the structure and when we apply what kind of structure. So, one of that is basically um, the criteria of the uh, geological aspect the soil condition. So, as because uh, the load bearing structure cannot be uh, really taking the huge load and that is why that we cannot make a multi story building on that. The one of the major consideration for load bearing structure that the soil should have very hard strata with very lesser drape. That means, uh, when you see the uh, you know uh, if you virtually make a cross section of our wall surface. So, at the top the ground level we call and then if we go towards the center of gravity center of the earth. So, then we get a sectional profile. So, we have a different kind of you know strata in that particular uh, profile. So, sometimes we get some you know very loose strata sometimes it is uh, basically very pervious uh, layer sometimes you may get something rocky sometimes it is sandy clay. So, depending on the soil condition we have to uh, assess the SBC safe bearing capacity of the soil. So, the way it can hold the load of the entire building or the structure. So, wherever we can get this uh, you know a uh, hard state as very lesser depth uh, may be within a uh, limit of 1.5 meter to 2 meter and we get that rock strata in those uh, conditions uh, this particular load bearing structure uh, will be useful. So, here you can see that um, with this spread hooding how like this with the offset ok only with the brick they are making the foundation and you can as is the height of this brick is varying from 75 mm. So, you can uh, actually um, estimate ok um, virtually assess that uh, the height of the foundation the depth of the foundation. So, uh, it is basically not that much uh, you know having that depth. So, this type of small depth foundation is also referred as shallow foundation. Alternate to that we have deep foundation where we go for like different kind of pile foundations and all. But uh, with this load bearing thing it is basically the shallow foundation and the main criteria that we have to check that uh, it is where we can get the hard strata as very uh, shallow depth. So, this is one suitability of this kind of you know application of load bearing structure to be checked. Now, along with that as we discussed uh, like uh, the main component of the load bearing structure is the wall. It may be made of stone masonry or may be big masonry, but basically the wall. But now, depending on the requirement, uh, like arrangement of those walls may vary. 
and that is why uh, how you design the structure that will also vary uh, you know case to case wherever you go for a residential building or maybe something like uh, in a uh, you know school building or maybe hostel building. So, based on that we have the uh, classification of wall arrangement. So, uh, the cellular wall structure, then you have simple cross wall structure, then double cross wall structure and the complex uh, wall structure. So, in subsequent slides we will try to understand what these arrangement are and where we actually require this kind of arrangement for the load bearing structure. But remember one thing even uh, you know uh, in the load bearing structure you may go for some partition wall okay, depending on uh, you know space distribution and all. But overall like the load will only be carried by the uh, load bearing walls which will have a higher thickness and that also turns with the load to the foundation. The other partition they do not need any foundation as of uh, like they are not taking any load from the slab. So, uh, those are basically also uh, referred as non structural wall. So, we have uh, like two things uh, into consideration. So, one is your structural wall. So, which will basically carry the load and the other one which is not carrying the load. Okay. So, mainly the partition wall that we can create for some, some purpose. Now, come to the uh, load bearing structure cellular wall uh, type arrangement where like the number of walls they are joined together okay? and basically the external and internal they are uh, you know combined to each other in such a manner that the internal you know, uh, you know what we can say that the external surface, external walls they create a boundary this profile and the internal walls they both are load bearing walls and they create the division and make it sail. So, basically uh, it is making rooms in practically, but uh, here it is basically they are creating different sales. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, uh, so many sales being created the outer walls is giving the boundary, the internal walls they are making the division and sales. So, with that yet in all cases they are all structural uh, walls that means the load bearing walls uh, and this arrangement is called cellular. So, in this kind of uh, structure how load will be transferred it depends on like the position. Suppose if I take a square slab and we have uh, like uh, this you know uh, wall you know all the sides. So, the load will be transferred very uniformly. So, uh, it will give uh, transfer the load from the slab in the four walls symmetrically. Okay, but, the moment uh, instead of a square one if you get something like a, a rectangular then the distribution will change. So, basically in that case uh, the maximum load will go for the you know longer side and accordingly the minimal will go to the shorter side. So, depending on the wall position and direction the load will also transfer accordingly. If at all the other parameters the homogeneity the thickness of the wall all the side will remain same. Now, moving to the next one the single cross wall structure. So, many a times uh, what we want that you know the load bearing structure the other problem that again we will discuss uh, during the disadvantage that we cannot really create big openings because the moment you create uh, big openings to that wall. So, it will become void and it will not that much capable to hold the load. So, that is why the opening size should have some limitation. So, sometimes you know due to that reason uh, you know there is some problem to you know uh, maximize the daylight, the sunlight uh, into the corridor or the interior space and many a times that is why the arrangement of those walls to be done in such a manner like we put those walls in parallel direction and the other part we use some non-structural partition wall where we can um, create some 
you know opening without compromising the load and uh, load carrying capacity and the safety. Uh, say for example, in this case uh, the large number of identical rooms were to be placed, say for hotels you get uh, typical, typical you know room uh, you know placed one after another and also like for the hostels it is the same. So, in that case we can go for some arrangement. So, here you can see the load bearing structure that you can see with the brick color the other one is of non uh, you know non structural wall. So, they are having lesser thickness or where you can cut the opening. So, maximum load will be borne by this parallel arrangement of your um, walls. So, basically this kind of uh, arrangement is called your uh, what we uh, say this single cross wall structure and in this case what exactly happened. So, when the load will be distributed from the top as because we have this wall as you know non structural ok I just try to make the plan of that. So, non structural so load will not be transferred by that. So, in that case the load will be transferred to the parallel walls. So, the main load bearing structure like uh, walls will take care of the load and these are something. So, if you place another wall here, so the some portion of the load will also transfer to this wall. So, this is one kind of arrangement which is single cross wall and the main reason to create the opening and uh, you know having more light inside the building. Now, in addition to that sometimes not only in single direction single axis will have the parallel load bearing walls, but it may be of the both the axis x and y. So, here it is the same. So, if you just compare with the previous image this hostel one and this one. So, here you say that ok. So, in this axis ok we have some um, you know load bearing structure ok the structural walls and along with that also we have in the other direction in the perpendicular direction and in order to maximize the daylight and all uh, what was the purpose basically. So, we create some non structural walls. So, essentially they will not take much load uh, or transfer the load to the foundation. So, main load will be carried out by the uh, your both way both axes you know placing parallel walls and that should be also in grid in this particular arrangement to satisfy the need. So, this is double cross wall structure. So, it is also very common uh, where you uh, actually you know see the you know apartment building or small residential building something uh, we can think of that. But at the same time when you go with a very regular shape and all distribution will be always easy. Suppose say if I just want to make uh, the plan of this uh, thing. So, basically if I draw these are the structural wall and then you have connection the thinner one is basically uh, your non structural wall. So, in this case if I draw this particular portion, so you can understand easily. So, in this case load will be transferred like this ok and in this case it is uh, at the you know perpendicular direction. So, the previous picture uh, what you see that it is all uh, aligned with uh, axis. So, if I just refer it to the y axis, so it is only with the y axis direction, but in this case it is both your x axis as well as y axis. So, they are placed depending on the grid and the need, but uh, in actual like when you think of you know making division depending on the purpose. Uh, like we cannot have the toilet of equivalent size of a, like your bedroom. So, it will not have equal size. So, bedroom must have a bigger size and dimension because of the you know furnitures to be kept in that whereas, the toilet we can reduce it. So, then there is so many variations and uh, in that case probably this kind of parallel wall system will may not work. So, then uh, portion of that building will some part of that will be load bearing structure thick wall and the other part where we make the partition as I mentioned earlier also we can go with a thinner one, but they all will be non structural walls. 
or sometimes they may be made of some other material not even with the masonry. So, sometimes we can go with some wooden partition or something like that. So, they will basically make the complex wall structure system. So, if we compare to the other picture it is just the modification of that where you can observe that uh, uh, the align, alignment of this is basically your cross method and the simple method. So, combination of cellular and cross wall arrangement is making is very hybrid. So, here you can see the irregularity of the space where some space being created. So, uh, for some, some privacy or for some you know making some storage. So, they are not essentially taking any load of uh, the slab and um, contribute to the load transferring. So, all these you know brick color walls which are the structural walls in this particular arrangement will be responsible for this. So, this is the complex wall structure. So, sometimes even uh, based on our need or maybe it was not planned initially and then in subsequent period we will impose some thing more like we just modify the plan and create such uh, small spaces as per our requirement then we can go with this complex uh, wall arrangement system. Now, uh, come here now we will see some of the photographs uh, where this load bearing structure being used. So, this is very simple and uh, like just only mm, you know one and a half story almost two story building in this case. So, what you can see here that main walls and this is being supported by some of the you know uh, LinkedIn or something. So, mainly uh, they are taking the load the load will be transferred the uh, transferred by your wall, but at the roof also you can see here it is very light structure and uh, not uh, you know flat slab. So, this is something where uh, it can be easily made and one of the advantage of making this uh, you know load bearing structure. So, it will be cheaper uh, compared to uh, the frame structure if we consider uh, only few story building. Definitely when you go for high rise then if we at all go with this load bearing then proper uh, you know um, care to be taken and then the cost effective cost will not be really uh, very low. So, for the you know low cost construction so sometimes it uh, is very helpful to go with. And uh, in this uh, what we have seen that uh, this complex structure can also be made uh, with the modification. This is a building from Chicago. So, it is 16 story load bearing structure. So, that can be done, but for that we need very much calculative, very well designed and the execution as well. So, in this uh, if you see that other image uh, compared to uh, like if I compare this particular building with this it is uh, like schematic one where the roof and slab load will be transferred by the bearing wall and where there is no reinforcement right. And then uh, you have something like uh, you know unreinforced concrete strip. So, without reinforcement we can go with some PCC plain cement concrete as a base to give uh, act as a foundation. So, this is the similar kind of thing, but instead of the pitch roof the slant roof here you have the flat roof. So, this system is uh, available. So, mainly for uh, low cost housing um, ok we can really think of this load bearing structure, but at the same time we also need to take care of the soil condition. If we get hard strata, if we can go for the get the strata in the shallow depth, the lower depth at very uh, low depth, then we can recommend this kind of uh, load bearing structure. But this is not uh, like uh, being used for the small structure. Sometimes some huge structure in history was also made um, with the same concept. So this is a, a building uh, in India. So I am in Ahmedabad, which is also a big machinery load bearing structure, and uh, you can see that uh, how beautiful you can make the design. You can also create the opening, not at very large opening, but whenever you create, you can give some geometry to come up with some good uh, appearance. 
and this is uh, something which is a uh, modern one. So, this is another arrangement where even uh, the top of this particular structure is also having some brick work. So, this is again a load bearing structure along with the wall. So, we can also create the column or pillar uh, made of brick. So, this is also uh, possible to uh, you know make this structure and where everything all the loads will be transferred to the wall to the foundation. So, walls are or walls and the brick pillars are responsible to transfer the load. Now, this is something where the, it is not the brick or stone, it is basically the sun dried earth uh, or sometimes also we refer it uh, adobe. Uh, so, this is used to make this kind of uh, structure. So, again it is uh, a load bearing where the um, you know uh, the modified earth uh, the sun dried mud is taking the load of the entire structure and um, just to you know give support at the roof. So, uh, here some of the wooden uh, plank used in this structure. Now, this is something where uh, I have shown like uh, the material can be of a different quality. Nowadays also there are compost earth material, then composite material, some uh, material made out of waste. Uh, daily waste. So, that can also be used uh, as a substitute for the conventional brick and make this low rise structures. Now, this is something which is great, there is no, uh, no concept of the low rise, but here also it is the machinery work and again uh, here the load, uh, the gravitational load and other load being taken care by this massive structure. So, it is also being used the similar kind of load bearing structure uh, way back in the Roman um, period where this Colosseum, this arena was designed and where you know those uh, gallery and this is transferred uh, through the wall on this particular surface. So, it was there also in history this load bearing structure and this is something which is uh, always appreciable and great architecture. This is also uh, made uh, with the concept of this load bearing. So, here also uh, you will not get uh, the frame structure or some different structure. So, again the step by step uh, like this uh, Taj Mahal was made uh, taking the concept of load bearing structure. Now, come to the uh, advantage in very short already we have discussed the advantages. So, here we just summarize it the load bearing structural system. Uh, external internal walls serve as structural element. This is something which is there like they will be sole responsible to carry or transfer the load, but as well as it will give protection as because of the thickness it will give protection from the external weather. Then like it may be uh, the rain, it may be something like the heat, it will be effective. Then the thick wall will also help uh, from the fire as well as it will also act as a buffer to you know uh, uh, create some protection from the noise. So, noise uh, resistance is also there for the thickness of the wall. And comparatively construction cost is cheap as because like for as I mentioned that for the low uh, one story, two story building. So, uh, that can be done. The design of the load bearing structure is also simple because uh, that will also design in a grid. So, different arrangement that we have discussed we can go with that. There is not much complexity unless we really go for a very complex design and then probably you know the last uh, of the fourth uh, type of arrangement that we discussed the complex uh, wall arrangement then uh, there will be some problem. Then the load bearing structure can be constructed without expensive plant and machine. We do not really require heavy machinery or plant for that. What we need some brick and mortar. So, with this machinery that can be done even in this case, uh, case means you um, uh, can take help for skilled or as well as the unskilled labor. So, there is something easy to construct and the design is very simple uh, to design all these walls and then hence uh, it can be really you know uh, be easy compared to the frame structure construction. And at the same time uh, like in this case uh, 
like uh, the type of materials required is also less. So, complexity of procuring material will also be uh, very much uh, easy for this kind of. Coming to the disadvantages, uh, here also we need to know that as because it is uh, basically you know we have to provide the thick wall. So, the carpet area means the interior space we have to compromise. So, the uh, carpet area efficiency in planning is very less and that is why nowadays is not being in practice and we move to the frame structure or some you know thin wall structure or different steel structure where we can maximize the interior space as well. Wall thickness cannot be maintained uniformly throughout because whenever you go for a multi-story building when height will increase then the thickness will also change because you know uh, the very beginning we have designed like if you have multi-story building the load of upper story transferred to the next story and like this. So, basically the load profile will be something like uh, in a pyramidal order. So, for that also you need to change the thickness when you go up you can reduce the thickness of the wall at the base it will be uh, bigger than uh, that. The limitation of span as because like it is only taking uh, the you know slab wall type of construction. So, there we have to also restrict to the size of the room. So, all old building if you visit that though they are giving very nice environment the you know thermal comfort the you know they are making the balance with the you know interior and outsider heat transfer, but definitely the thick wall actually you know limiting the space inside. Then also the limitation of the height, this is there. The limitation for providing openings is also there because we cannot cut those load bearing structure uh, for the ventilation and the light. Walls have to build fast. This is a very nice point where it says that as because the wall is the only supporting member, so all walls to be constructed fast then the slab. So, we have to wait till uh, all the walls are constructed the same height and then you go for it. So, that is the limitation in this particular case and which is sometimes time consuming if your uh, you know area is too much and so many walls to be constructed. And another one is basically this load bearing structure is not really uh, very good in terms of you know earthquake resistance as because during the earthquake the shock wave creates uh, very simultaneous you know tension and compression and as because this machinery they are put in uh, you know tension because there is no reinforcement no steel which can actually help uh, to manage the tension. So, it will not be uh, really good for especially the high rise building. So, that is why the limitation of the height and the number of stories there when it is a small design like one story two story building then there will be not much effect on this you know uh, earthquake, but we have limitation for this. So, probably in this case like uh, the thickness of the wall if it is too, so that will also sometimes give uh, a feeling uh, towards uh, like the megalithic structure. So, that can um, be fruitful during the earthquake or it will give the overall earthquake resistance, but not for uh, the building having more height. So, these are the disadvantages. So, with that if we just summary these things already we discussed. So, in this case the main um, structural component is the wall that will take and the load transfer slab to wall to foundation and then to soil. So, that is the overall transfer the arrangement that we have seen that it may be cellular where the external walls they make the boundary the internal walls they create the division. So, that they create the cell and cellular then we have simple cross where uh, the parallel walls are being constructed to welcome light and maximize the light and this kind of arrangement can be helpful where we go for a very identical uh, rooms placing one after another like hostel or hotel then double cross. Uh, both the axis like uh, the x and y axis both the axis will put some structural wall and in order to welcome light we provide some non structural and create the opening. And then uh, basically what we have the complex one. So, complex one is basically based on the requirement uh, 
uh, we can actually uh, make something non-uniform, the internal arrangement and where we have combination of non-structural thin wall with the thick structural wall which will be responsible. So, it is a combination of your cross arrangement as well as the cellular arrangement of that. And we have seen the from history and the recent times the use of this and basically for this brick masonry or the stone masonry was used. So, earlier still we got this uh, you know concrete uh, in construction. So, most of the masonry work that done even in uh, you know Byzantine period and those Gothic period. So, many of the buildings are made of this masonry and acting as a load bearing structure. Sometimes they being supported with the flying buttress to reduce the uh, thickness of the wall and increase the interior space. So, this is another arrangement, but the disadvantage is basically you cannot go for a larger height, you cannot really make uh, for it a long span as well as like it will not really effective if you go for high rise and in earthquake prone area. So, then uh, it will be a problem and wherever you can get a good soil uh, strata or hard strata at the you know very shallow depth then this kind of foundation, uh, this kind of uh, you know arrangement uh, like your spade fruiting with uh, your uh, brick work is fruitful. So, load bearing structure can be and as because like compared to the frame structure it is cheaper. So, for like low cost housing or something this kind of load bearing structure is helpful. So, with that I conclude here. So, these two uh, are some reading materials where you can go through it or else you can also go through the links I have given in um, some of the slides. So, you can read more on it. So, with that uh, we conclude this section. So, next we will be discussing the temporary structure and then we will try to know that uh, the need of those structure in uh, the concept of the construction and you know in the context of your you know typology or how it can help uh, the you know making the structure as required. So, with that uh, again I just would like to uh, say thank to all of you to take part in this course. Uh, thank you.